Hey, Dipwad! Oh. Krabby Patty. Wake up! Oh. Arrow, what's up, dog? You've been asleep since your Surf's Up review. So what, like, four, five hour nap? Surf's Up was August. It's November now. Three month nap? It's a new record. Nice job, me. Yeah, okay. Just review the game, would you? Some dude in a suit and sunglasses left it for you. Well, that doesn't sound suspicious. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. Oh well, goodbye. Okay, bye. Hmm. TMNT. Teenage Mutant Ninja Frickin' Turtles. Still one of the weirdest ideas for a franchise, but it's still pretty successful. There's been TV shows, movies, toys, video games, clothing, comic books, toothbrushes, lint rollers, pretty much anything imaginable. And this here is the game based off the 2007 movie of the same name. The movie itself wasn't that good or that bad, but it was big enough to warrant its own tie-in video game. So let's take a look and see what TMNT has to offer. Probably not much. The story of TMNT is told through a mix of comic book pages and low frame rate clips from the film. It's narrated by the four turtles talking to their master Splinter about how the events of the film went down. The flashback starts off with Leonardo, as he ventures through a jungle somewhere in South America to make himself a better leader. Because nothing makes you a better group leader than being completely alone for months at a time. Apparently the Ninja Turtles are no longer fighting crime as a team. Raphael still fights crime solo under the guise of the Night Watcher. Donatello just dicks around with technology all day, probably just browsing Reddit or something. And Michelangelo is a mascot for children's parties? Really? Imagine this guy showing up in Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh god, this is it! This no, is it! Oh god! Christ! The gameplay is divided up into two distinct sections, platforming and combat. The combat is very basic and even more repetitive. You can kick, punch, charge moves, perform a ground pound, and do a co-op move with another turtle. Kicks and ground pounds do next to nothing in terms of damage. They mainly just knock enemies back, which can be helpful every once in a while, but I found them very ineffective. I would just mash the punch button until everyone fell down. When you kill, I mean, knock out and dissolve, ten bad guys in a row, you go into an uber mode for a while, where every hit is a one-hit kill. I mean, one hit fall down and turn into stardust. The best thing to do here is your charge punch. The charge punch will send your turtle from enemy to enemy, hitting them each once. And in uber mode, this is absolutely devastating. Also, when Raph is the Night Watcher, he can trigger his uber mode at any time. The problem with uber mode is that whenever you defeat an enemy when it's activated, the impact slows the game right down. It's not like a frame rate issue or anything, it's just a weird bullet time kind of effect. It zooms the camera really far in and tilts it and everything goes slow and kind of blurry. It really breaks the flow of combat. It's nothing huge, but I found it incredibly distracting. The other main part of the game is platforming. These basically act as waves to move the player from one fight to the next, but they can actually be pretty fun when they work correctly. It feels really rewarding to pull off a long string of these acrobatic feats without making a mistake, and these moments are definitely the highlight of the game for me. These platforming sections can flow very well and be a lot of fun. The key word there is CAN. There are several points in the game where something just screws you over, like the camera, or the environment, or the game not actually telling you that if you hold jump when jumping from ledge ledge, you'll go further, even though that's not how the rest of the jumps work in the game. These controller throwing moments aside, the platforming is overall very fun and satisfying. Back to the story. Leo returns from Tebecador or wherever and decides to get the team back into shape and out on the streets fighting crime once more. During their training, they come across a big ol' angry yeti dude and beat the crap out of it. 
After defeating Fuzzy Lumpkins, the Foot Clan show up and steal the creature in a garbage truck. Rafton's the Night Watcher get up and tails the Foot all the way back to the tower of a man called Mr. Winters. One of the three richest and most powerful men in the world? For some reason, Winters wants this beast and others like it, and he has hired the Foot Clan to bring them to him. Also, the Foot is now run by a dis lady. Who is she? Where is she from? What's her name? What's her shoe size? I don't know! And I bet some of you are wondering, where's Shredder in all this? Well, don't you worry, because we're going to get to him soon enough. Trust me. But for now, let's talk about the look of the game. It looks like crap! Crap, 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 crap! The tonal animations are pretty smooth, but that's about it. The character models are all really chunky looking. None of them look good, reptile or human. The city levels are extremely bland and boring. Every sewer and rooftop looks the same. Not that sewers look the same as rooftops, that'd just be silly. One's underground and carries waste and water and sewage away, and the other is on top of buildings, and the spit has gone far too long. That was a joke, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for coming. The jungle levels are easily the ugliest. They look half decent at a quick glance, but if you look a little deeper at it, you'll see these horrible flat textures. Leaves are 2D, and things are clipping everywhere, and it's all just gross. Uh -huh. Thankfully, there aren't too many of these levels. Sound design is not this game's strong suit either. While the sound effects are passable, the dialogue is Team NT's biggest audio issue. Lines get repeated over and over and over at nauseum. The turtles will say the same boring lines countless times and often out of place. You'll just be taking a stroll down Main Street when all of a sudden... Totally awesome! Yes. Thank you for pointing out that astute observation, Mikey. You remember those repeated death sections I mentioned earlier? Yeah, the dialogue doesn't make those any better either. Yes, we get it. Don's the nerdy one. Thank you for being so subtle about it. Sarcasm is a foreign language to you, isn't it? The worst thing about this game is the boss battles. You fight these random stone general guys that just show up out of nowhere and oh my god, Becky, they do not shut up. At all. Ever. Of all time. In fact, they talk so much, they'll talk over themselves. Sometimes with three voices. There's a good chance my brain is about to explode right now. And this wasn't just a one-off thing either. This was in every single boss fight in the game, including the most disappointing boss battle I've ever played. So the whole game I've been sitting here wondering, where's the turtle's main enemy? Where's Shredder? Did he die? Is he in a coma? Is he in an alternate dimension? Did he decide to extend his stay at a four-star resort in South Carolina? We finally can see Shredder in a flashback scene, even though we're already in a flashback scene. Stupid storytelling aside, despite my limited knowledge of the Ninja Turtles, I know that Shredder is a 100% certified, free-range, low-fat, gluten-free, bona fide badass. And this is going to be one hell of an awesome fight. Except that the fight lasts 42 seconds. I'm not joking. The entire fight with Shredder the Shredder is 42 seconds long. I'm playing the whole thing in the background right now. Shredder somehow spawns these clones of himself and just stands back as they fight for him. Shredder doesn't actually fight at all in this. And his clones are no tougher than the normal grunts I've been fighting for the whole game. This is a massive letdown. First, they don't even bother having him in the main story. Then, they decide to make him a total pushover of a boss that doesn't even fight back. This is just insulting to the character of Shredder and to the player. Whatever. After that pointless time waster, Leo gets kidnapped and taken to Mr. Winters. I don't even know if it counts as wasting my time if it took less than a minute. The other three shellheads go break into Mr. Winters' tower to save him. After traversing the maze, it's just a hallway. Climbing the tower and setting Leonardo free, you come across Mr. Winters, just chilling in the hallway. Then he unloads a massive amount of backstory onto us, which I will try to run through as quickly as I can. Him. So about 3,000 years ago, there was this dude named Yaddle, and he had four warrior priest generals, yes, that's what their full title is, and they pillaged villages and towns. One time they come across a super advanced society. Attacking this super advanced village somehow causes 13 monsters to be unleashed into the earth because the planets were aligned with some crap, and the warrior priest generals return to stone. Yaddle was given immortality as a punishment, so he'll know the pain of his loved ones dying over and over again until the monsters return to whence they came from. And surprise, surprise, Yaddle was Mr. Winters, and he's only trying to correct his mistake. Whew. <sighs> So that's where the monsters came from. 
even though we only ever saw one. I'm sorry, I just can't get over how much backstory they throw at us at the end of the game. The only thing left in this game is the boss fight, and they just gave us three leather-bound edition of Tolkien's lore worth of explanation in a vague attempt to tie the game into the movie some more. In the movie, this stuff was explained in the first scene. Also, this is another damn flashback! Remember that the Turtles are telling Splinter all this, so now they're telling him that Winters is telling them a story. I'm surprised Winters didn't have a story about one of his warrior priest generals start talking about the time he went to Staples to buy printer ink. Let's just finish up this dumbass story. We've just got the final boss left. However, it's just repeats of the bosses we fought from earlier in the game. Mind your Sasquatch and Shredded Cheese. The only difference is now you're on a tiny platform that Donatel keeps fucking flying off of. Well, there is one other thing. You only fought three of the warrior priest generals before, and now you get to fight the fourth one. And I'm not kidding, his boss fight is a game of fucking Simon Says. Dodge a couple of projectiles, do a combo move with a matching turtle color, and you win. It's not even a satisfying victory. It's... it's just... just watch! <laughs> this is just a huge, colossal, big, fat, cheap, whiskey-drinking, cigar-smoking letdown of an ending. I mean, I'm not expecting much from the ending of a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, but I'm expecting something other than just that! So the monsters get sucked back home, the warrior peace generals are killed, and Mr. Winters turns into gold dust. And... and that's it. The turtles talk about brotherhood or something, and... it's over. On the plus side though, I mean I perfected the game. By accident. I'm not kidding. I'm a little annoyed how many times I've had to say I'm not kidding in this review. You pretty much can't help but get all the achievements if you beat the story. All but one of them are tied to story progression. Beat all the levels, use each character action skill, and do a co-op move. The only achievement you can miss is collecting a coin, because coins don't show up until you replay a level. See, these little things, they're tokens. They're not coins. There's a difference. Just play the first stage for about 20 seconds after you've beaten it, and you'll get the last bleep bloop no problem. Easiest thousand gamer score I've ever gotten, but by god was it unrewarding. While I do enjoy the platforming sections at times, the combat is so underdeveloped. The sound is grating on my ears, and the story just plain sucks. There wasn't much going on for 95% of the game, and then it just throws the entire Elder Scrolls story at you and expects you to care about it. It's such a fuster cluck of a game that the few good points it has get knocked off by the repetitiveness and the absurd story that seems to forget that, in the end, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are in this too. You know, saying the name Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles out loud makes me realize this might not be as absurd as it is. I'm just kind of shocked that how suddenly and seriously it took itself at the end. Despite all that, I do still enjoy the platforming section of the game, and if you're looking for easy gamer score, this is a pretty damn simple way to do it. I guess overall, I kind of, maybe, sort of recommend this game, if you can get it for a decent price anyway. You know, after playing this game, I'm kind of interested to get some more Ninja Turtle stuff. Maybe I'll check out that Michael Bay movie. Yeah, or maybe not. Arrow, what's up, dog? Got me right on the head. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. We should make it better. No, it's fine. <laughs>